Getting tired throughout the day, having those lethargic moments throughout the day, those are some big ones. Um, heart palpitations after eating, shortness of breath after eating are a few. Highly irregular bowel movements. Um, I call them messy bowel movements. No. Yeah. I know. We're getting into it. You have to talk about this stuff. You can't talk about our nutrition without talking about a little bit of the waste. Okay. Um, so those are a few of the reasons. Then another one is how often you get sick. How often do you experience allergies or a histamine response? Oftentimes that's related to our nutrition and food for reading. Our body's in this heightened state of rejection, of histamine response, right? Um, so, weakening the immune system is a big one. Your body is fighting off food. You're thinking food's a foreign substance in your body because it's like a, something that your body's rejecting. We all have foods that our body's rejecting, every single one of us. And chances are, every single one of us, at some point, is eating those foods that our body is rejecting and that's causing this reaction where things start to go bad. And that's where I go back to that bloating factor. We, we, let's say we eat something. I'm gonna go into the compounding effects of nutrition. 
you go, you, you eat something that makes or causes a little bit of bloating. And then a few hours pass, and because your gut is a little bit damaged, you start feeling hungry a little sooner. You're actually maybe questionably hungry or not, but your stomach is kind of hurting a little bit from your food and bloating that's going on, like bloated intestines in there. It's gross to think about. Your intestines get bloated from our food that we're eating. And then within a few hours later, you eat again on top of the bloat. And what do we eat again? Sometimes more poor nutrition. So we're compounding that bloat. And as the days go on, we're just compounding this bloat in our, in our systems over time, and then things start to break down. Our organs stop operating as efficiently. Uh, one of the most common is like adrenal fatigue. Uh, it's a big one, but if you, you know, if there are these people out there that can diagnose these things for you, tell you which organs are not operating as efficiently as others. Uh, but nutrition is the biggest catalyst for why those things start breaking down. Also cholesterol production. Many people are taking medicines for cholesterol to reduce that. Um, but it is proven that certain foods for certain individuals, if it's a food for you that's reactive, then it's gonna trigger cholesterol production in some cases, right? So your body's just producing extra cholesterol just because you're eating this one particular food that's messing the whole system up, right? So a lot of that is about digestive health. That's our big goal in this challenge. And when our digestive health is on point, then our health is typically on point. You'll find yourself getting sick less and less. People report their allergies start to go away. Um, I mentioned in one of my messages I sent out, these are kind of some cool things that start to happen. As soon as you switch to a challenge like this, sometimes within two days, a lot of these symptoms just go away. You start to feel better very quickly. 48 hours and the system's kind of getting out of your, or food's getting out of your system. Um, then uh, as the week goes on, your inflammation weight drops. What I call puffy water weight retention. Um, it's what bodybuilders try to get rid of before a, a show, or um, it's basically this layer of puffy water weight all over our body. I could be really lean like I am right now, but if I go eat really poorly and start puffing up and getting inflamed, I'm not actually gaining fat, but I am gonna look way less lean, way less defined on a regular basis, okay? And that's just an example. Continue to think about that compounding effect that we're talking about, okay? Compounding over time, so it just keeps getting worse over time, and eventually it does lead to more fat production and those things also. Um, but that starts to drop off. So within the first week, you could lose up to 10 pounds, maybe 6% if you do your math of your body weight, you can just drop that weight off and you start to look a lot leaner in the face uh, is one of the first things, first places you notice it. Um, but one of the coolest things that I love is when somebody walks in that I know that maybe I know they've been doing good nutrition, maybe I don't and I have to ask them, but I can see it just in their energy, their complexion, like the, the good nutrition glow is what I call it, but they have a more rosy complexion. They have more like blood in their skin or something. Um, they're not as pale and sickly looking. That's what happens to us from poor nutrition, especially when you get in the middle of a Metcon. And that's when I see it the most sometimes. I'm like, I don't know what they're doing in their life. They're either drinking a shitload, they're either eating really poorly, Maybe they, they're smoking up a shitload of cigarettes or something, I don't know, but something's making them sick in the middle of their workout. And so good nutrition helps you feel better in the middle of your workouts. You don't want to go around looking sick and pale. Do you? No! Thank you. All right. So, that's my opening speech. <laughs> There is a reason I'm so passionate about this. When I was younger, I was 22, I actually thought I was dying. I was a little dramatic, but still, I thought I was dying, or I thought I was developing diabetes, but I, every time I ate, I would get heart palpitations, I couldn't breathe, I was passing out like a 9 o'clock at night, chronic fatigue, couldn't sleep, I was having like 
back, neck, all kinds of issues going on, and it turns out I was malnourished from a damaged digestive system. So I had to repair the damage, which is a, what I'm about to talk about. This is a nutrition plan that can help us repair any damage that's going on, repair the gut. Um, but anyways, I found out what was going on, and I was able to correct that, and that's one reason I, that I look the way I do today. It's not necessarily because uh, I wanted to look this way, but it's because of, I want to feel good in my life. I don't want to be depressed. That's another symptom of poor nutrition. You wake up feeling shitty all the time, or you don't have any energy all the time, you're eventually going to get depressed. Um, so we want to be happy, full of energy, and that's also why I have more energy today, probably. Okay. So, for those of you that are taking on the challenge, we've got the, the official challenge is teams of four, 21 days. That's a good length of time to really see some awesome results and, and to repair the digestive tract and such. So for, the net, for, those, for, the, for those 21 days, we're gonna focus on eating real whole foods, Food is the main ingredient itself. So what I like to say is broccoli is broccoli. There's no other ingredients in broccoli. We're going to focus on eating natural, unprocessed meats, lots of veggies. We're going to get more veggies in our lives, try some new veggies, got to get experimental, got to come up with new things to eat sometimes. Some fruit, nuts, and seeds, in moderation. So the biggest thing is we're eliminating, we're gonna go over what we're eliminating, but definitely processed foods. So even in the meat category, that includes, we're gonna give you a handout too before you leave. We have printouts of like a little two-page cheat sheet for you that'll have a, a lot of this on it. Um, this includes seafood, yeah. eggs, you, want to, you just want to be careful. You can have bacon, but we need it to be like a more healthy, uncured style of bacon. We want to read the ingredients of anything that we're going to eat. And if it's not a whole food, then we, we're not going to eat it. It shall not pass these lips. It's like, think of it like a fast. What if I told you that you've got to go 21 days, no food? 21 days, no, that's our plan. 21 days, no food. Okay, you can drink a lot of water, okay, maybe we'll give you a liquid shake or something, but 21 days, no food. That's freaking hard, okay? That's freaking hard. You get to eat as much of this stuff as you want. We're not limiting portions. It's going to be hard sometimes to get enough food, to get satiated as we call it. So that's one of your goals, is to learn how to do that for yourselves. Um, drinking a lot more water is part of that, which... I will cover that. The beverages we'll be focusing on. Lots of water. You can have unsweetened tea. Or we are going to allow a little bit of stevia. We're not, we're not at the wine yet. Okay. Um, a little bit of stevia in moderation is okay. If you have a sugar issue, sugar fix problem, or sweet tooth really bad, the only way to get rid of it is to cut out all things sweet for just a little bit. Okay? So that means no stevia for you. All right? Yeah. Um, yeah. Unsweetened tea. What about honey? Black coffee. Honey is a, a natural, um, 
you want to you know make sure it's a natural source honey we'll allow that in moderation as well for one of your nat your natural sweeteners um, but again got it this is slippery slope we're talking about okay we say we allow a little bit of honey and people be over there okay go to that all right so black coffee um low low sugar kombucha That's a big part of kombucha, if you're not familiar, is a probiotic tea um, for putting in some good bacteria. And that's, you okay, Louie? Yeah, get it turned out. Um, <laughs> so, uh, kombucha, you put in healthy probiotics. You're helping balance your gut biome. That's a big thing about what's gonna be happening naturally. But if you feel like your gut bacteria is a mess, and that's where I'm gonna go back to our messy bowel movements, right? That's a good, a clear sign that our gut bacteria is a mess. How many of us have gone out for a night of drinking, right? Alcohol kills the bacteria in the gut. Every time I talk about alcohol, I'm gonna look at you now, okay? Um, alcohol kills the good and the bad bacteria in our gut, so it really messes up the gut biome, especially if we overdo it. And so the next morning, <laughs> our bowel movement after a night of drinking is usually really bad, right? Who's with me? Yeah. All right. <laughs> no, I'm not. I know I'm not alone. You it. <laughs> so anyways, that's what we're talking about with when your bacteria is off and you know you need maybe a little bit of healthy probiotics. Kombucha is not the only one. Um, we can look up some other sources. There's, uh, I believe, yes, uh, sauerkraut, I believe, is one also. Uh, kimchi is one. Uh, yogurt is one, although we are going to be eliminating dairy. Um, but there are some healthy yogurts out there. It's not that we condemn all yogurt. Um, Keeper's on the list, too, but... There, I think there are some good probiotics in that too, aren't there? So, that's our water focus. Let's go back to our uh, original focus. It's good to focus on what we can have versus what we can't. So that's why we're going to spend a little bit of time on that first before we get to the nose and the groans. Uh, so you can have all kinds of meats, all kinds, right? Um, don't limit yourself. You can even try maybe something new. Um, red meat, yes. And, yep. It is approved. It's actually one of the most, and this is one of our, our good buzzwords that hasn't been brought up yet, but it's one of the most nutrient dense foods out there. Is a little small piece of, of steak has more nutrients than many other things, and, it, and, the, and it's packed into a small amount of space. So you don't have to eat a lot of it. A small amount. If you eat a lot of it, that's when it starts to become maybe a little too much for the body to process and stuff. Um, seafood, yes, it's okay. You want to be careful. Yes, that is something to watch out for. If you're eating a lot of seafood, you want to watch your mercury, mercury levels. Yes. Sir. So, um, when it comes to like weighing your protein, what is a good measure? Um, on this plan, it's going to be hard for rather see a giant plate of veggies and then a smaller portion of meat possibly um, just for you know that which is much better nutrition that way. Uh, overall. And it won't be overload in your system with protein. We, we sometimes do overdo our protein in this fitness world, yes. What about my seasoning uh, you gotta be very careful what seasonings you're using. Um, I want you to stick, I should have wrote that on here, that's a good thing to add. Um, stick with natural herbs and spices. Stay away from probably a lot of the mainstream seasoned salts and stuff. You, you can de definitely find some probably seasoned salts that are more natural. Maybe go to a, a, a healthier source store or something like that. 
Um, but yeah, you want to read the ingredients, and as soon as that, that's the, the rule on reading the ingredients is if there's a word you can't pronounce, if there's a chemistry kind of looking word in there, a chemical word, we don't eat it. Okay, that's a processed food. So no processed foods. If you look at an ingredient like on a layer bar over there, um, it says like almonds, dates, and uh, something that's a whole food because all three ingredients are whole food. So it's a whole food basically ingredient um, package item. But most packaged things, unless it is a uh, health conscious brand, most packaged items are not gonna be a whole, whole food approved, right? Um, so we're focusing on nutrient density, and that's where we go back to the compounding nutrition. So we talked about compounding bad nutrition. So let's think about what happens when we start compounding good nutrition, okay? You start getting hungry and you're just feeding yourself more nutritious, nutrient-dense food, right? And your body's just singing this little song on the inside like, thank you. It, it can feel pretty amazing. You got to be really in tune with yourself and what's going on. And when you do something like this, it actually helps you to become more in tune. And then when you, re, if you reintroduce something that's a, a reactive food for you, um, which may or may not be, you know, part of this or part of the no list, but it's something that you specifically react to. Um, that's when you really realize, oh my gosh. I've been living with this my whole life. I've been eating this stuff my whole life. Um, okay. We'll save some more questions for the end. Okay. We're focusing on low below throughout this. Sometimes you can try to do really well, and you're like, I'm doing great. I didn't eat anything. But all of a sudden, you're like, why am I bloated? Okay. Um, one of the ways to help get rid of that extra bloating that's happening is giving yourself a little more time between your next meal. Let it, give it time to go down a little bit, drink some water, flush things out a little bit. Um, that's where you might look at an intermittent fast plan or uh, intermittent fast in the morning if you felt really bloated the day before or something like that. That can help clear you out just a little bit as well. Um, veggies. There is one, one little note. Uh, we want you to limit your corn intake. I call corn the redheaded stepchild of vegetables. It's kind of a, it can be an inflammatory vegetable. It's hard for the body to break down. So anything that's really hard to break down is hard on your digestive system. And when we're trying to do a digestive kind of repair program, uh, you want to stay away from things that are hard to digest. If I take it a step further, it's the stuff that still comes out whole the other end, right? Didn't break it down. <laughs> okay. Um, and one uh, of the definitions of nutrition, I think, if I'm not mistaken, is the ability to break down your food and use it for fuel, right? So food that doesn't get broken down is not being used as fuel as much. Either. Think about that. Um, also, you have to be careful with nightshades, and that's especially important for people that have autoimmune disorders. Um, we t I mentioned that briefly earlier, but I tend to believe that all of us have a slight autoimmune response to really bad food, okay? So all of us may have some type of autoimmune where your body sends white blood cells to attack a food that it doesn't like, right? And that, that can start happening. That's why our immune system drops oftentimes. Um, when we're eating really poorly. Night shades. Night shades are, that's a great question, baby. Night shades are um, a lot of the things that have skin on them. Like, now that's probably a very generalized statement and probably wrong in a lot of ways, but tomatoes, and it's more the skin that's the issue than the actual inside, or it could be some of the acidity and stuff too. But a lot of people are reactive to tomatoes. So that could be a trigger food for, for many of us. How many of us have kind of eaten big bowl of spaghetti and have that acid reflux or something like that, right? 
Um, and that's because we're eating a lot of it too. Now, if you eat a fresh tomato and, and just one of them or a half of one, you're probably gonna be just fine. But if you eat a shitload of them or you know a whole plate of them, you might be in trouble. And then other nightshades are peppers, hot peppers. The thing about the skin that's on a lot of these is very similar. That's why I brought that up. But um, starchy potatoes are another one. We want you to just be a little bit conscious of not overdoing because Let's face it, we're all french fry junkies and potato junkies sometimes. And so if we say you can have some potatoes, and I can have french fries, you guys. This nutrition plan is great. Let's make some more french fries in the oven. Um, oh, and that brings up the next thing, cooking oils. This is a super important one. This is one that Coach Nick is very passionate about, too. Yeah. Very passionate about avocado oil. better for low heat. You have to be careful with your oils, um, with, and especially olive oil, like with high heat, it starts to get a little toxic. So keep it on the lower heat on that one. Coconut oil and animal fats. We haven't even gotten to our no list yet. Um, but there is one exception to one of our no's. I'm gonna give it away, but you can have grass-fed butter, and you can cook with some grass-fed butter as well, which we'll consider an animal fat. But other animal fats might include, like if you use a little bit of bacon grease to cook with, stuff like that. And let's see. The fruit, in moderation, that is gonna be your one source of sweetness. Uh, the reason that fruit is better is because it has fiber, and the fiber slows down the sugar delivery. There's a couple important things about that. If you want to become the best fat burner and muscle producer, you want to have steady, consistent insulin levels, and you want to have a steady, consistent fuel source. You also want to train your body how to burn fat. So we are wanting to have these days, if you haven't heard, but fat used to be the enemy. Everybody used to low fat this, low fat that, right? Nowadays, it's all keto and um, healthier fats are really good sources of fuel. They slow down digestion. Let's say, uh, for example, if I were to wake up in the morning and have a bowl of oatmeal with nothing else, I'm, if that, I'm gonna turn that into sugar really fast in my system and I'm gonna have a, a sugar crash where I start to get shaky and stuff like that. But if I have enough fat with it, it's gonna slow that down, and I'm gonna have some more sustained energy throughout the, uh, for the next few hours. Um, protein also can work similarly with that too. So some protein, some fat, good macros, uh, which are your three big ones there, fat, carbs, and protein. Um, so balancing those out for each meal. We don't, we don't wanna go just a, a starchy carb meal which there's not a whole lot of starchy carbs that we're gonna eat on here once I get into the no list. What about peanut butter? Peanut butter's off the list. You can have any kind of other nut butter, along with these nuts. But we are gonna eliminate peanuts. Um, we're not eliminating all of you. So we're going to allow, this is not a paleo challenge per se. Uh, we're gonna allow in moderation some uh, with cautionary tale as well. We don't want you overdoing the beans necessarily, unless maybe you're a vegetarian, that's one of your uh, bigger sources of protein. Um, but you can have some whole beans in moderation, maybe a, a mixture. But peanuts, we're gonna stay away from, and peanut butter specifically, um, because that's just too easy and, and a go-to source. It can be a bit inflammatory for us. Um, if we're not careful, we'll just eat peanuts for every snack, um, instead of some of the more healthy nuts and seeds.
Okay, so the, let's go ahead and go over the no list and then we'll get a little further into it. So we already said <laughs> no. We already said no processed foods. That includes a lot of things. No sugar slash added sugar. Um, real quick note, I know I'll start jumping around a little bit just to make sure we get some stuff in. But the fruit, the moderation, we're not overdoing it. I don't want you making a whole bunch of uh, fruit juices and pounding it because you can't eat that in normal sitting. So it's only what you can eat in normal sitting as well. Um, and dried fruit, no sugar added is okay, but that's a very slippery slope. So those dried mangoes are freaking good. You're gonna wanna eat the whole bag. So be careful, be very careful of that, and don't go nuts. You gotta, you gotta have somebody there to slap your hand or something. Cause it's hard, it's hard. Okay, no sugary drinks, I think that's given. No artificial sweeteners. did say we're allowing stevia in moderation if you must. No dairy, that's a big one. Yes. That's good. Yeah. Three of them, you might be going getting, and then three again later, and then three again later, and then three again later. So like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, ration it your stevia packets. One or one for three cups. But yeah, just you'll know. I want you to listen to the little voice in your head that says, You just had too much. You're gonna yeah. know when you when you're when you start to feel like you're going over the moderation, then that's when you did. Uh, so no dairy exception is the grass-fed butter. Look for Kerry Gold brand. Costco sells it for cheap. Um, it's proven to be a less inflammatory, less processed, healthier uh, butter. And yes, we are going to say no alcohol. Oh, what? It's rough. No it's rough. alcohol? Now, that one honestly is one of the ones that will make the biggest difference. Okay? Got to get that bacteria in line. Gotcha. And you got to do it by giving yourself a period of time, even if you did seven days. Okay? If you did seven days no alcohol or 14 days no alcohol, right? That's going to be really powerful. And then you might notice how much better things are getting. You might start to see the difference in 10 days because you're not carrying the extra water weight. Alcohol makes us puffy. The more we drink over time, more puffy we start getting. If you've ever seen a ninth stage alcoholic, they're dying from it, basically. Right? Not that anybody here is like that, but I've seen it happen and it's scary when you see somebody you love that's like <laughs> because their freaking inner workings are all fucked from the alcohol. Right? And if we think that it's not fucking us, we're lying to ourselves a little bit because it fucks up the gut biome. When you fuck up your gut biome, you fuck up your immune system. So we can't do it. The F-bombs are dropping. Sorry, Mandy. Forgot. No. <laughs> Glad your mom's not here. <laughs> no, I'm talking about the F-bombs. <laughs> but yes, no alcohol for you too. You're under 18. <laughs> There's beers in the fridge now. Just kidding. <laughs> okay, now, in order to do this, you've got to plan ahead. You've got to plan in advance. You can't just wake up and be like, hmm, I don't know what I'm going to eat today. That's a recipe for failure. Okay, so kind of like think, be thinking about Have options, because if you're like me, then you are partly a, an emotional eater which means I'm not gonna eat it if I don't feel like eating. I could prepare meals for the whole week and then the day comes and I'm like, fuck, I don't wanna eat any of that stuff, right? So maybe have some options. 
So it's like you got, okay, I got three things to choose from, and then I can talk myself into eating one of them. Like you, you have to kind of like coerce yourself a little bit. Like, what do I feel like? I don't know. I don't know. Um, but anyways, plan ahead. Um, maybe come up with some fast go-to options. If you if know where, where you live, where are your go-to options? We made a, a little list, and this is just a starter list. I hope to add to this over time, too. And you guys, everybody here can probably add one to the list or maybe add something. Um, but, like, go-to options. We do have a territory food delivery service. They deliver food. I would say almost all of it is food that's approved for our challenge. Um, and they deliver it to your homes currently. You just have to be home, ready to receive it like between a certain window on Sunday and Wednesday. Uh, there's other food delivery services now too. There's a lot of them out there that are delivering healthy food. And that, that is pretty easy. You don't have to prepare, don't have to leave your house, that sort of thing. Um, sometimes a quick option, which you might want to still be careful about, like choose, try to find a healthy version, rotisserie chicken at the grocery store. Just look at what they're seasoning it with, read the ingredients. You can eat off that for a couple meals at least. Um, we got snack bars. There's some some approved snack bars like with the Lair bars or RX bars or Epic bars. There's probably some other bars out there. But again, you got to read the ingredients if you're not familiar, if you don't know that it's an approved brand. Um, so be careful there. Snap Kitchen is a really good one. They sell Snap Kitchen meals at Whole Foods also. Whole Foods can be a good option, but it's kind of tricky there because there's a lot of bad options. Uh, <clears throat> then Origins is a restaurant in Dallas that serves some healthy food or paleo style food. Cozy Kitchen as well. HG Supply, Flower Child um, are some restaurants. And the coolest thing about this, when I was uh, about almost 20 years ago now, is when I started learning about this. And I started having to follow a plan similar to this. And I learned. The biggest, one of the biggest lessons to health is eating real food. It's as simple as that. It's like one of our greatest lessons in health sometimes. So I learned that back then. But back then, gluten-free, you were freaking like one, very rare to find gluten-free food or gluten, very good gluten-free food. You had to just kind of figure it out at different places you went. Um, so in 20 years, back then I was like, I, after I experienced it, had this food awakening or nutrition awakening, I, I basically was started to say, you know what, someday more people are going to know about this, someday there's going to be a lot better options out there, and here we are today, and it is way easier, way better, it's still not 100% easy, and I'm not even going to get into what's going on in the world today, because this is where health is at, it's not in a freaking, you know, mask, yeah, that's all this um, okay, now, on to the challenge. So, you're on a team of four. You're gonna get a scorecard. And your scorecard has a few categories on it. Nutrition is one of the, the whole package. You're gonna have an opportunity to get points. You get points for, for each day, and then maybe points for different things in the day. So your nutrition, for example, you'll get five points if you go a, a, a full day and, and don't deviate from this or don't mess up and have something on the no list, right? Um, keeping a food log, a food journal, so you write down what you're eating. That can be a very powerful thing, even if you do it for a week, but you get three extra bonus points for that. And you get two bonus points for sharing it with your team, for having that back and forth. That's gonna help keep us accountable and really keep you together in this. Um, water consumption, minimum of 100 ounces per day, you get a couple bonus points for that. Um, this is a really good one to spark things for the morning. Uh, you wake up and have at least 16 ounces of water chug a couple glasses of water. I would even say if you could do two pretty early in the day, early in the morning, you're going to really help start your systems up. It's one of the best things for your metabolism to kickstart uh, your metabolism for the day, flush things out, 
and to start the day. That'll help the complexion as well. And seven plus hours of sleep. Sleep is also another one that's really important. Um, we could probably talk, have another whole seminar on that. But you get seven plus hours, you get one bonus point. Uh, for each workout day that you do in the week, you get a bonus point. So if you worked out five days, you got five points. If you work out three or four days, you get three or four points. Um, I don't think we're doing extra points for two workouts a day, so don't go crazy. <laughs> um, and one of the things that will happen when you're working out and doing this program, you're going to get hungry. Your metabolism is going to start firing really well. You're going to start burning through your fuel much faster because you're eating all this good stuff and you're not bloated and, and your digestive system's working better. So um, I want you to eat when you're hungry or even eat before you're hungry, before you have a, a crash of any kind, a sugar crash, right? We're going for those consistent blood sugar levels, which also helps our moods so you don't yell at each other. Try and find a couple of <laughs> so keep consistent blood sugar levels. It's like the Snickers commercial, only it's real life. Um, and we're not eating Snickers. That's all for us. Okay, and then 15 minutes of mobility a day. So you get an extra bonus point for mobilizing your body, working on maybe a trouble area or something, or a uh, range of motion limitation that you have. Um, that's top priorities in what we do here. Oh, all right. I'm trying to think if there's anything that I'm forgetting. Yes, Kate. What are your thoughts on protein powder and working shakes after your workout? Yeah, such good questions. Thank you. So, <laughs> yeah, um, we want to, for the most part, we'll say we want to stay away from the supplements right now, stay away from the protein powders right now. Um, the ones that would be approved would be uh, like a vegan protein, brown rice, maybe pea protein. Um, read the ingredients, make sure that, it's, uh, that it doesn't have chemicals in it and stuff. Um, I am a big proponent of like Vega brand, Vega shakes. Uh, wake up in the morning, and I'll be, that'll be the way that I break my morning fast for, with a, a baby shake. <clears throat> and I don't have any reactions to it at all. Some people will react to the pea protein in there. Some people might react to some of those proteins that are in, in those uh, vegan shakes and stuff. So you do have to be careful. Um, but if we were to do one, that's where we would go. And, um, but we also want to be like not overly So there's a big debate about that going on in the world right now that's saying that we actually overdo it and we don't need as much protein as we think we do to maintain our muscles and such. Um, so I think honestly as long as you're eating like like this, focusing on meats and as long as you're not eating vegetarian, I think you're probably eating vegetarian. Yeah, so do you have a recommendation on half protein for Not necessarily. Um, part of what our philosophy is on that, like that, that's been talked about throughout the, the history of time, like get you know, a certain gram per body to get a certain mass, and maybe if we were really trying to do it. I would just tell you, if you're trying to gain weight, I want you eating basically a lot all day, and don't, don't let yourself get hungry. Eat before you get hungry. Have a constant, steady stream of nutrients, and that's what's going to be your muscle production, that they're building blocks. It's when we have no nutrients in the body that we're not... Uh, that, rebuilding or not producing muscle, right? We go into, we, we stop. And, and our body kind of goes in that stop mode. Um, or it goes into conservation mode, right? So as long as you're getting in, I, I, I'm not worried about you not doing enough protein. Um, yes? Um, two questions. One, what about the and then two, what about like here, all my mom or no mom or any of those moms that we don't have any of that? Yes. Excellent questions, Katie. Thank you for reminding us. I think I forgot to add it. I think I did add it somewhere, but we did say um, butter, but grass. Yeah.
have our milk substitutes like coconut, um, coconut milk, um, almond milk will allow in moderation again. Um, and you have to be careful again. Everything we're doing here, we have to be careful what we're going for. So because like a silk brand is going to have some stuff that's not approved on the list. It's going to be more of a chemical based product. So you got to get find one that's like healthy and that's what's hard to find. So, um, and then the other question is ghee. I believe ghee is approved. Because we're not doing a strict paleo challenge, um, we said no processed foods. And I forgot to cover grains. This is a big one, important. If I would have forgot this, Game over, man. I would have been really beating <laughs> myself up later. All night, thinking about it all night. You would have been emailing me all that. Okay, grains. Um, that's right. That's what I live with in here. It's fine. Um, Normally we say no grains on like a paleo challenge. And grains are, a lot of them are processed. So no processed grains. Um, we're, we're doing no pasta, no breads, stuff like that. However, we are going to make the exception even with the pasta, brown rice pasta. And um, what was the other one? Rice and oats. Whole gluten free oats. Rice and quinoa. Now, smaller portions of all of those more moderate on those. We're allowing them a little, a little trepidation about allowing them. Um, that's, a, a, that's a little bit of our slippery slope. And here's why. It's because we tend to go to what's easy. We tend to go to what we know. And I could see some of us like, you know, just going nuts and eating rice for every meal or overdoing it, maybe. Oh, we can have oats, and then you're having oats all the time because it's easy and it's like something you know, and it's filling you up a little bit. But those will work against us a little bit on this. Those are more for our weight gainers, <clears throat> our weight losers, people who want to lose. Stay away from those altogether, perhaps, right? Or limit it to once in a while type of meal, not every day. That's another type of moderation is not every day. If we're eating every day, that's not moderation. If we're eating every meal, that's not moderation. And by the way, that's a little another uh, kind of tidbit of knowledge is that the foods that we're reactive to, when we develop a kind of autoimmune response to a food, when we develop a rejection to a food, it's typically something we eat a lot, every day type foods that we just somehow got in the habit of it. Could be eggs even. Eggs can be a reactive food for, for some of us. So just because we say you can eat eggs, you got to be conscious and pay attention. If you eat something and you're like, ugh, I don't feel good. If you have any abnormality symptoms, that's either A, because your gut's already damaged, or B, because of what you ate. But after, let's say, a week or so, the repair or gut repair should be already taking place. So then you should know that it's not gut damage that's causing it. If your gut's damaged, everything you eat will jack you up a little bit. You can't just, you can't digest things very well. You can't process food very well because you, your system is damaged. Um, so pay attention to that and you'll do better. Yes. Is there a amount of time we should eat per day? Like, do more than six that weight? 
Um, I, think not, you can get I mean, I think that is more of a personal thing. It's not something that we're prescribing to you. Like that's that's the thing. We want you to eat when you're hungry or before you're hungry. So as many times as you need to in the day. If you're eating smaller portions, you're going to probably eat a lot more. If you're eating bigger portions, you might eat less. Uh, but as long as you're sticking with this, think of it like the fast again. You're fasting from everything bad for a while. And as long as you can, but you can have food. You can eat. And you can eat it whenever you want, however much you want. But you have to stick with this. And the cool thing is, it works. Um, that's what I was going to say to Judson's question earlier too. Is our philosophy. Your body is going to go to its most natural and athletic state. Okay? If we're in here trying to make unnatural things happen, we have to do unnatural things in our nutrition. Right? If we're trying, like if I'm not a, a, a big dude, if I, if I said, you know what, I'm tired of being a little guy, I want to be big, I'm going to be a big rock. Okay? <laughs> Think about how much food I'm going to have to eat to do that and how unhealthy that's gonna make me. In fact, that's part of my story, is one of the reasons that I did so much damage is because I ate like Kobayashi, who knows Kobayashi? One of the greatest eating champions of all time, okay? So I strove to be one of the biggest eaters, smallest, biggest eaters in the world. And I, I think I succeeded. I, I used to eat two foot long sandwiches from Subway with double meat in one sitting. Think about how sick you feel after that. Shit. I was hurting myself, wasn't I? Okay, don't do that. Don't do that to yourself. I used to eat, well, here's one of my favorite ones. I ate a whole box of macaroni and cheese, and then I ordered a large pizza and ate all of that on top of it, right afterwards. And I wonder why I'm fucking dying. Why am I dying, doctor? Doctors couldn't tell me, though. No doctor told me what was going on with me. I mean, I was an athlete, too, so I was eating like a crazy athlete, but, and then I stopped working out. And when that happens, chemistry changes, you're not burning as much, and then the body starts rejecting stuff too. So it's probably from a big change. But anyways, this is the kind of stuff, when you start having issues related to nutrition and digestive health, it's very hard for a lot of the medical doctors and community to tell you what's going on. But if you're getting sick all the time, if you're having like all these bad things happen, this is one of the first places to go to start repairing it, to start making things better, no matter what you're dealing with in your health. For real. Okay, probably forgot some stuff. Yes. Okay, I am not super familiar with a lot of those, so I, I would say just follow the, this guidance and read what's in it. I am suspicious of sometimes a lot. Sometimes a lot of the vegan food can be very processed with, but maybe not processed with as many chemicals, right? But it's like a whole combination of different things that make up the meat, right, or whatever it is. So just be careful, read, read the ingredients, and you'll know when you read it, if it has chemicals you can't pronounce, if it was made in a, in a, in a, in a chemistry project in a factory somewhere, then you probably, it's not a real food, okay? Real food has real nutrition. The reason we focus on real food, nutrient-dense food, is because it has real nutrition to it. We're going to compound that for ourselves. We're going to feel amazing, get the good nutrition glow. Um, the, uh, the, the processed foods, or I think they call them acellular foods. If you look at them under a microscope, they even look different. It's like not a real food. It's not real nutrition. It's not nutritious for us. So stick with the good stuff. Let's see what happens. There's also some that get extra even boost from like uh, bone broth. I mentioned that in my video the other day. But like if you start eating a, a, like bone broth for the first time and you're doing a nutrition plan like this, that's what might give you that buzzing feeling where you're like, oh my gosh, this is some good nutrition. So I hope you get some of that too. Any other questions? Jason? Uh, what about like and like Yeah, um, our nutritionists that I have uh, studied under, if you will. Uh, she say, don't don't worry about that, uh, especially right now. Now, maybe if you're if you're being prescribed those from your doctor, or practitioner, or something that's different. Um, but you can try to get all your uh, 
nutrition from your food for a little while and see how that goes. Um, but she would argue that a lot of that stuff just gets passed through the system anyway, so we're not absorbing it as well and stuff like that. Thanks again for being here, you guys. I'll hang around if you have more things to talk about. Uh, beans, legumes, and stuff. Legumes. We did say we're going to allow those um, because we're not doing a paleo. We're doing more of a whole food type of challenge. So whole, unprocessed beans, no refried beans, um, and keep it in moderation. So not every day, not every meal. Uh, but if you have a little bit of them, we won't consider it cheap. Okay. We won't consider it a fail. All right. Biggest takeaway, happy gut, happy gut, write that down. Sorry. Happy gut. Uh, happy gut. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, the one to write this up, uh, just say, this is a really good guy to bloat. Just say no to bloat. Um, if, you ever get, if you ever get bloated when you're eating, that's a, just a clear sign that something didn't agree with you and any of those weird symptoms, right? So start paying close attention, own, take ownership, acknowledge what is going on with your body and your system. Maybe you even make a list and you write down, what are you experiencing right now? Like when you wake up, when you're sleeping, like, uh, you know, are you waking up a lot? Are you having bad dreams? Are you, um, you know, maybe at your regularity? Um, any symptoms you think you're having from your diet or nutrition, write them down and then see what happens when you start this, see if they go away. So the official challenge starts on the 8th, Tuesday the 8th, day after Labor Day. So you get the holiday to have your last beverage for a few weeks. <laughs> I need a drink, coach. Uh, there are a couple alcoholic beverages. Let's say, let's say we do make the conscious choice and say, you know what, F this, I'm, give, I'm giving up my points for the day and I'm going to have a drink. Uh, wine is one of the better ones on the list. It's not, you know, and one, glass, one or two glasses, it's when we start drinking a lot more than that is when things really start to go bad. So no to a full bottle? Probably not a full bottle. <laughs> Uh, half okay, we'll is probably yeah. too much, uh, but then there's a, a few other ones. I'll, I'll have to look them up again. But some of the ones that are like not, you know, not don't have gluten or aren't made with wheat and stuff like that, that don't have the trigger foods related to their processing, um, can be a little bit better for us. Or non non sugary drinks. The worst the worst thing is when we go out drinking and we're drinking a whole sugary. bunch of sugary alcoholic drinks. Uh, if you've ever noticed. That will give you a worse hangover too, a lot of times because of that. You get if you even just eat a shitload of sugar at night, you'll get a hangover from the sugar the next morning. If your body's in tune, if you're a high performance machine, like you know you are. Um, but yeah, I'm excited for you guys. I'm excited to see the results, and I'm excited to flaunt those results to those that aren't doing it. <laughs> we're gonna be like, we're gonna be highlighting all you guys. Look how great so and so's doing. <laughs> and then you got that meme with the guy with the eyes looking at the person who's not doing it. <laughs> no, I'm just playing. <laughs> yes, we are. We'll try to keep you motivated along the way. I. Uh, this is something we want to bring more consciousness to our our gym. Um, I believe it's an unwritten agreement when you're working out or exercising, period. It's kind of an unwritten rule or agreement that we should be doing something with our nutrition along with it. So if we're not doing that, we're out of agreement with ourselves or out of agreement with what we're doing in our lives. So let's get in agreement and we'll do it together. That's all I got. With what? No, like you do diet and you do your normal workout. Yeah, actually, actually, that's a really cool thing to test. And it, maybe we will test that. Like, uh, we could do a workout um, on Tuesday and see how we do. And then we can do a workout in 21 days and see if we do a lot better. Yeah. But I believe that yes, the answer I believe is yes, that we this helps our performance and our workouts. You won't feel sick. 
you'll be in the middle of a Metcon, you'll be like, wow, I actually feel, feel really good right now. And that's what dialing in your nutrition for athletes. I mean, the top athletes in the sport know it, that if, if they're not doing well in their nutrition, their performance is going to suffer. But if they do really well, they take it to another level. So you can expect that. All right, guys. Thank you. Thank you.